booleans and binary numbers in LabVIEW. On my front panel, I'm going to put some booleans to represent the digits in a binary number. But since I'm going to have a bunch of them, let's put them in an array. Stretch out the array to reveal multiple elements in the array, and each one of these will be a place value in a binary number. In our normal decimal numbers, we have place values of ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. In binary numbers, we have place values of 2 to the 0 power, 2 to the 1 power, 2 to the 2nd power, 2 to the 3rd power, and each place value is an on-off switch for that value. Place a numeric indicator under the front panel. This will hold the value of our binary number in decimal representation. Hit Command E to bring up the block diagram and then you will see on the block diagram there's already the decimal indicator and the binary array. Make sure that your binary array is a control as opposed to an indicator. You need a for loop to iterate over the binary array. The for loop needs to run the same number of times as the number of elements in the array. So use the array size block and wire that to the n on the for loop. Then pass the information from the array into the for loop and turn off the auto indexing. We turn off the auto indexing because we want to read the array from right to left because that's the way the binary numbers work. Also create an initial value of 0 to pass into the for loop and then change the tunnels to shift registers. That way then we can pass the information through the loop over and over adding to it. Let's use an index array block to grab elements from the array. Now we need to do a little bit of math to figure out what index to give the index array block. We want to start from the end, so we take the size and subtract the current iteration of the loop. Remember we start counting with zero. We will also have to subtract one so that the array size will match the highest element size. Pass in the array, and each time we go through the loop, it'll grab an element from the end of the array, which will be a Boolean, and we want to convert that to a 0 or 1, the two digits that can make up a binary number. Now I'm going to take that 0 or 1 and multiply it times the place value. If it's zero, it means it's off and it won't, there will be nothing to add to our value. If it's one, we will multiply that times two to whatever power corresponds for its place value. And we'll get that power from i. Once you have the product, we want to add that to our running total insert an addition block between the shift registers and wire in the product and each time we go through the loop it'll add on to it and then take the final result and wire it into the decimal indicator. I'm going to put a few comments in there describing what's happening in the code. Alright, now let's test it out. If all of them are on you see that I get a value of 63. If the rightmost one is on and no others, then it is 1. Here is value 3. Here's a value of 4, and so on. This shouldn't take many blocks, but here's a challenge. To add a string indicator and in code that will change the Boolean array to zeros and ones, as is shown here.